we booked the ticket for Tuesday. Change and me to stay. But we would disagree since there is hardly ever peace. And with all these emotions, we're going up, 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 up. I've had more reasons you've heard them all. Good morning, folks. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. We are at uh, Mesa Verde National Park. We just wake up here. We are in the in the campground. Yes, there is just one campground inside. Otherwise, you can just camp outside at the BLM uh, uh, campground. It's for free. Where we were yesterday and yes. we show you on the last video. We chose to stay here last night because today at 9.30 we have one tour at Balcony House, there we go. And then we have another tour at uh, 5 p.m. at uh, Cliff uh, Palace. Mesa Verde National Park is so big uh, that from here that we are already inside uh, and we are like uh, half an hour uh, far uh, from the entrance, uh, from here to where we are going now, it's almost one hour. So it's better that we go now. We keep moving be because uh, we will be late. So good morning and... Uh... We will show the balcony outside. You and I are my missing piece, but still you'll do. With the place we're going, it is 800 plus years old. But we want to preserve these walls, so please don't lean on these walls. Don't do this on the walls. Like, I want to see how hard these bricks are in there. Don't, don't, don't tear stuff apart. When this area was not heavily populated, before Chaco had slowly started to move out into other places like Aztec, this place was bustling with activity. If we could just stand up really high and look down and have all the archeological sites just kind of illuminate themselves, this place would look like a disco ball. They're just everywhere. So the area started to change as people stayed put. It's something that's happened to every single one of our ancestors. The environment changed. And people made a decision. Do we stay or do we go? For you I'll stay. And with you I lay by your side. So the morning is night and the night turns day. We are going to Balcony House this morning. We are doing the tour, the guided tour. You cannot go by yourself. So you pay five dollars per person to do the tour. And it's really interesting. You just uh, learn everything about the, the people they were living here. They were farmers. They lived uh, in this place 800 years ago. And then they ju just left. Disappear. Disappear. We don't know exactly why. And I've had my reasons you know. That's shell. Water can't penetrate that, so it seeps out. So the water that is right behind me was actually rained many, many, many years ago, and it slowly seeped through. As it seeps through, it does something to the sandstone. These alcoves didn't form by people carving them. They formed by Mother Nature carving them over the millennia. We climbed this ladder here. It looks less higher in the camera. <laughs> I'm more scared about this. Claustrophobic. A little bit. Oh, like mm -hmm. tiny, tiny, tiny spoon. I, you're living in a camper, really small camper <laughs> since one year. What are you complaining about this little tiny space? Stop this. <laughs> Let's go. But still you'll do I'm not your broken puzzle I'm an entertaining Rubik's Cube uh, Potential house buyers here The brick is quarried Carved Right here from the whole part 
The sandstone that has collapsed over the millennia to make this alcove gives us the materials we can use to turn it into brick. Now to do that, we're going to have to do a lot of what my dad calls character building, which is a bad term for me because it means hard work. So we're going to build a lot of character. We're going to send the kids out. You guys are going to get water forever. Because look in the cracks of all of these bricks. This mortar. That's it. And that's all that is. That's dirt. That's not Portland cement. That's not concrete. That's dirt. And look at that wall. That is dirt that's holding that wall up. Bob Vila has never built any in my opinion. That will last as long as that wall has. So in building this, the first structure that was built on this side, well, I'll let you guys point to me from that wall there to that structure right there. Point to me the building or the structure that was the first one. And just take a minute. Look at the bricks. Look at look at some things here. Look at the features. Try to get your mind going. Oh, yeah. oh, closest to the wall, the oldest one. That's a very good thought. Uh -huh. This is like the dream tour. You guys are awesome. Keep them coming. I'm loving all of this. We're talking about it now. You guys are making my day incredible. I love it. Now, prepare to have your wonderful minds blown. The most preserved structure in this side is the oldest. This one here? That's one right here. Yeah. Look at those bricks. Look at how neat. Look at how tight everything's fitting together. Look how straight the wall is. Exactly. Look at this corner. Straight as an arrow. This was built in the 1240s. Right here. And we know that because these buildings require a lot of wood, a lot of material for the roofs and for the balcony right there. That's how we know. We can do dendrochronology. And for you I'll stay. And with you I lay by your side till the morning is night and the night turns day. something similar at the balcony house and this is something really spectacular down there and with you I lay by your side till the morning is night and the night turns day This evening at 5 p.m. we will go on a tour right there, Cliff Palace. It's uh, lunch time and this is the spot where we found to have lunch. There's the camper where we cook. 
it's not allowed to have fires otherwise we could have fire here and look this view you can see there on this tree and this is the view absolutely fantastic amazing look at that and I've had my reasons, you've heard them all And for you I'll stay And with you I'll lay by your side Till the morning is night And the night turns day We are almost ready to go up there God knows you were made of love And need a try An easy thing for me to do with anyone except for us Oh, and I'm surprised at any time you'd want to know Cause my heart and mind aren't anywhere So Clip Palace is very cool, but it's fraught with mystery, okay? So from what we can understand so far the Pueblo people lived here in Mesa Verde for about 750 years, okay? And most of that 750 years, about 600 of it, they're living on the Mesa top. And so it wasn't until the 13th century, the 1200s, that people began to move into the alcoves in larger numbers. So myth number one, the Pueblo people only lived in the alcoves in the 13th century. That is not true. What we can see is that under many of these sites, there exist pit house villages which predate this 13th century structure by hundreds of years, 500 years, 600 years, and so on. And so people were always using the alcoves. And so in them, oftentimes, is where you find the water resources for the people that lived here. Most of the time, these water resources we call seep springs. And it's because of the geology that water comes out of the cliff face. Mostly that happens at the very back of the alcove. So in Mesa Verde, there are no lakes, no rivers or streams. So seep springs are it for water, okay? Now, whatever the reason was that the Pueblo people started moving in large numbers from the Mesa into the alcove, we don't know. Here's another myth, all right? Number two, in the old days of archeology, span we said this, the Pueblo people were worried about defense. They moved into the alcoves as defensive measures against other tribes. But what else? Well, in the 13th century, new climatological data shows us that rainfall patterns were less reliable and there was a series of long-lasting droughts that may have caused people to move from the top into the alcove. Yeah, it's sort of a hallmark of indigenous building technology. Not to down. Look up, guys. The secondary ledge is pretty cool. It's rather unstable at this present moment. And so, in the middle, you see there's an area where rocks are just stacked up flat without the mud between them, no mortar, right? This is called a dry stack wall. And it is an original one, but we see it in a lot of other sites as well. Now, what do archaeologists say about the Sun Temple? Well, check it out. It's built in the shape of the letter D, okay? The Sun Temple has very thick walls, and the walls of the Sun Temple have a lot of um, very sophisticated masonry. It's like a lot of work to make a smooth surface. In Sun Temple, there's a series of kivas and towers here and there. Now, what do we say about this structure? Well, in the old days, archaeologists naming it Sun Temple makes us think that it was just for the use of religion, right? But equally so, we have to be careful not separating the Pueblo people's religion from their organization, their government. So it could be an administrative complex, a regional hub of activity, all these things. But last year, a research paper was published that talks about Sun Temple and its uh, geometric uh, mathematical alignments in the walls themselves. It's amazing. Archaeologists look at them and they attributed towers to sort of a defensive arch in a lot of places, most notably in Poland. In the old days of archaeology, this is what we said kivas were, right? Something like this. Kivas are the ritual and ceremonial chambers of the Arashazi Indians. Does anybody recall this, right? Yeah. In fact, we still say it today. But as we move forward and as we try to decolonize our archaeology and present more of a humanistic view, we recognize that when we say ceremonial and ritual to describe another culture's complex human spiritual expression of religion, 
It's sort of a technology of primitivizing that religion by saying it's reduced to nothing more than chanting and dancing and it's, that's it. And so today if we say, all right, kivas are religious spaces, right? Like churches or mosques or you know whatever. It formalizes the structure much more. But here's the thing. We see that kivas had many uses. The archeological record tells us that they were used for various things like weaving of cloth, Produce production of tools, even domestic things like perhaps habitation and cooking. And so really, they're religious spaces with a multitude of uses, right? Multi-purpose rooms. Now remember as well that kivas had flat rooftops covering them. So everywhere there's rooms around one of these round subterranean structures, there was a rooftop creating a courtyard or a piazza within an area, right? And so it would have been really cool. You also had a hatchway in the middle where a ladder stuck out. You could use this space for everyday living, for whatever. My studios are fine. fine. my job from here on out And am I something that you should ask for Or something you should figure out Let's figure out 